Elon Musk once said, I think we are at the dawn of a new era in commercial space exploration. Keep this in mind as we discuss today China's 6G and information economy and exploration of Mars. My name is Dr. David Wararu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. I want to thank those of you worldwide who have made comments and are making requests for specific topics such as China's 6G. A separate forum is in the works for those interested in an in-depth analysis of these kinds of topics, most especially for those in decision-making positions where this kind of analysis will solve, where this kind of analysis will allow for a greater return on investment. At a viewer's request, we did a deep dive into China's 6G program in terms of its mission to Mars. Now, I know with your military background, you can't reveal everything, but you can tell us something about the implications of this and what it really means. Well, that's correct, Ross. Uh, uh, this show, by the way, just for our viewers to know, is a follow-up to a show we did back in November 20, last year, uh, in which we talked about 6G back then, and how we saw it moving forward and the request we received from some of our viewers asking us to do a follow-up on it. So, well, uh, just for our viewers to have an understanding, and we're going to have, by the way, a link uh, to a description about 6G and so forth at the bottom of the, uh, of the description. Uh, 6G basically is, uh, works with a terahertz waves, which is a microwave uh, that works in space in about 50 gigabytes a second, or about 100 times faster than the fastest technology we have on Earth today. The implications of that border are outrageous. Well, that's correct. So from a military perspective, and uh, without going into details, uh, I can just see the applications for it. And any country that will have access to uh, 6G technology will have a far advanced type of weapons, lasers, and so forth. And but, information transfer. Oh, that's another dimension to all this because this one, this 6G technology is gonna go on two separate tracks. One of them is geopolitical, including the military dimensions, and the other one is economic, given the information economy we're in. Because uh, just for our viewers to know, 6G technology will have a faster type of, uh, allow for the transfer of information, even encrypted. So the encryption system, which will allow, for example, if you want to do so many calculations regarding the return on investments for adventures, whatever. And that's one of the dimensions to this from the economic side, from the military side, and why China is now going to Mars. <laughs> Coincidentally, that the United States just landed Perseverance a rover last week. So you can just see how 6G now is going to create a space race between the United States and China. Well, from what we can tell, the space race is on. The second space race. We know that in 1957, Russia put what well, was then the Soviet Union, put Sputnik into orbit. And after a number of American failures, all of a sudden, the race was on. And within uh, less than a decade, human beings were on the moon. Well, this could be the potential of the same uh, scenario that could be happening moving forward, assuming the United States will embark on, on, in, on investing in the space program. But just to, go back, uh, one, just to go back to address the military dimension to it, uh, China has launched about 10 satellites back last year in November, uh, and eight of those satellites were dealing with the uh, monitoring the crops uh, and the weather patterns and so forth. But there were two main satellites uh, among those 10. One of them deals with the laser technology. 
and you can I personally can see just if I am to advise a client who is involved in laser technology for example I can just see the application of 6G technology in creating certain advanced type of lasers that can be used in weaponry and so forth. We know in 2007 the Chinese were very effective in using the lasers technology at that time to knock out one of their old obsolete uh, satellites. You're absolutely correct, Ross. There was uh, an event that took place in January 19, 2007. And uh, at the time I was still in Washington and I remember uh, the Pentagon was frantic about it. The reason being because this kind of uh, uh, activities, uh, it would be easier that could be the U.S. spy satellites would be targeted. The U.S. weapons space for <laughs> space uh, uh, All of a assets, yes, it would be very, very vulnerable. And this is where, as a former military myself, I see the dimensions, the military application to 6G moving forward. Well, we can celebrate, <laughs> celebrate, the space race is on. And it has so many implications to it. And one of the possibilities is technology leaps and bounds in the next decade or two, many generations ahead. You know, I, my cousin, Phil Schaffer, was a former flight director for NASA. Mm -hmm. And he took us through a behind-the-scenes tour. And we were looking at the guts of one of these huge rockets. And he said, you see that mess of wires and mesh and so on? That is your future PC. That would be like what? With that's, a that's your future phone. And the phone, interesting. He said, yeah. That, as big as that is, led to that. Yeah. And so we might see technology that will stagger us even today, just as this would have staggered me when I was doing that tour. That's correct. Well, as uh, you know, there are, just for our viewers to know, there are so many applications to 6G. And when you take into consideration the current geopolitical shift that's taking place around the world, the economic changes on the global level because now we are talking about the new uh, global economic order uh, with China at the head of that and uh, uh, with the uh, BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative, with China quantum computing live over any other country, you can just see where all this is going to fit in like a puzzle. And for whomever, China or otherwise, for whomever controls the advancement of this technology, 6G, will have a control over the economic outcome. An outrageous advantage. And it's going to be really tough competition for the United States because as we've said over and over again, China is producing one million engineers and scientists in their universities, graduating them every year, one million, one million, one million. The United States can't do that. We don't have the population for it. And there is not the national incentive as there was in 1960 or, or the early 60s to science, math, science, math. We don't see any of that going right now. Well, this is why uh, China 6G technology and exploration of Mars could trigger that competition that we experienced back in late 50s, early 60s between the Soviet Union and the United States. It could work out and it could not because mind you that China might not be transparent about everything like what happened in 2018 when one of its rockets fall in in ivory coast and we didn't hear much about it so and with this kind of uh, 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 incidents if, if a country is not transparent enough uh, we will not know uh, to the point that now china is considering having its own space station what's well, beyond consideration it's the plan it is the plan indeed china does not want to be subordinate to the u.s on earth no they do not space. want to be <laughs> subordinate to the U.S. In, in space. And you can just see where it is going. So basically what China is moving towards, it's having an independence, uh, technological independence from anything. As a matter of fact, they are creating now an equivalency to GPS, which is only about 10 centimeters uh, uh, difference between GPS and this uh, particular, uh, it's called Beidou, uh, the Chinese technology. 10 centimeters. That's you know, about you take it. a look at Chinese history. And they have, in their part of the world, for 2,000 years, they have been the thought leader, the political leader, the science leader, the cultural leader, and influenced everything in Southeast Asia and Asia. Yeah. So this is not new for them to have this in their, built into their mindset of 
We are superior. We are the one. So we're looking at it right now. That's correct. So this 6G technology is going to move, put them far ahead of other countries. Basically, everyone else will be playing catch up. For our viewers, what would you say they should be paying attention to right now well, based on this information? It's just to understand that the impact of this 6G is going to have on a daily life, basically. Because what, I will be, what, what you, the viewer, and all of us will be looking for is the impact, for example, of the AI, the artificial intelligence that's going to be using the 6G technology and the impact it will have on us on every day. So basically, it's going to be, uh, uh, are we looking at the dominance of the machine? Is the machines going to dictate our daily lives? Uh, we don't know how this, the only thing we know for a fact is that this 6G technology is so fast that it's going to facilitate some business transactions, some shifts in the telecommunications uh, into how we interact with each other on a daily basis. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other videos. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay informed. Till next time. Bye bye.